Hi, my name is Nathan Litchens. I'm a writer, photographer, conservationist and adventurer. And I'm on a solo trip deep into the jungle of Borneo, one of the last remaining jungles in Borneo's north, the state of Sabah. So come with me and see what we can find. People say all sorts of things when I tell them that I'm going to you know, go on a wild adventure somewhere. They say I'm crazy, brave, stupid, all sorts of things. Because typically, I try to go in solo. And this trip is no exception. I'm not carrying any emergency equipment. Okay, and for that, people I know will criticize me. But, that's the adventure. So, this river here has been a real challenge to find. I've been motorbiking right around Saba, looking for a suitable river to hike into, and sadly, Borneo is a major, major victim of a growing human population around the world. Uh, there's a huge demand right now for palm oil, and unfortunately, Borneo is a paradise that is perfect for growing palm oil and it's a sad sight when you're flying over Borneo and you look out of the window of the plane and as far as you can see is palm oil in both directions and that's from a plane that's scary that's all lowland jungle now people will often say oh but there's lots of jungle left on the mountains now what's wrong with that the fact is Montane forests up on the hillsides hold very little in the way of wildlife. The diversity is all down near sea level and this here is one of the last forests at sea level. When I tell people I'm doing things like this they also say oh you should go with a group or go with a guide. I know they mean well when they say that and I'm very grateful for their concern and uh, no offence to any guides because I am one myself back in Australia. The fact of the matter is, I really, really cannot possibly view this as an adventure if there's someone holding my hand and uh, saying, do this, don't do that. I mean, I'm coming up here with great intentions. I'm here to photograph the wildlife, film, document as much as possible. In the couple of nights I'll be alone. I haven't taken any weapons other than my bush knife. All I've got is a tent sleeping bag, a little bit of food, and some rope. That's about it. Okay, right in front of me is an animal I haven't seen here yet in Borneo. It's a freshwater turtle. Actually, I have seen freshwater turtles, but not this species. So what I'll do, I'll see if I can catch him. I'll just take off my bag and see if we can get him to show you. Now this has totally made my day. It's only day one, but, oh yuck. Wash your bottom. This turtle is one of those that is becoming incredibly rare here in the jungles of North Borneo. It seems everyone wants a piece of these. Uh, the Chinese restaurants quite often feature turtles acquired illegally. Very, very commonly actually. Smell. Oh, it's emptying its bowels everywhere. Just keep washing him. It's disgusting. Ugh. But also, the locals like to eat them. They're considered highly tasty, and because they're slow moving and relatively easy to catch, it's exactly what people do. They catch them. Now, oh, yuck! <laughs> that smell is revolting. I don't know what this thing's been eating, but in fact, I know practically nothing about 
the uh, tortoises and turtles of Borneo. Except a lot of them do bite. This one's a male. He's got quite a long tail. But also, the underside of the plastron here is indented. That's so uh, he can balance on the female a bit easier. So what I'll do, I'm going to need to get some photos and a bit of video of this guy. And the light is rapidly failing. So what I'll do, I'll find a suitable spot and get some nice videos and photos and we'll leave him be. If the locals could see me with this turtle, they'd be uh, just, you know, quite angry at me not taking it back to give to them. This truly has made my day. All right. Well, <laughs> waiting for that turtle to come out of his shell was an absolute nightmare. I uh, sat there for an hour and a half, didn't come out, so I decided just to walk back to camp. But, unfortunately, I hadn't put up camp before it was dark, so in the dark, I had to select a location, set up the tent, and just get everything prepped. Now the problem with that is that I'm beside a, a river, and these rivers have a habit of rising if it rains, and although it's a starry night outside tonight, I don't trust it because in the distance, very far away, you can see flashes of lightning. I really hope that storm doesn't hit higher up in the catchment or come over the top of us. Me, sorry. Oh, by the way, dinner is going to be cooked up in just a moment. And what I've got, I've got uh, dried fish, known as ikan bilis in Malaysia. I've also got tomato soup and some two-minute noodles. I'm going to put all that together and see what, it, see what happens, really. I don't have a knife or fork, but uh, I do have medical forceps, so bon appetit. Well, I've now finished dinner and camp is all set up, so I'm heading off up into the forest to see if I can find some of the nocturnal animals. It wasn't long until I spotted my first animal clinging to a tree trunk. It was a tarsia, a tiny primate thought to be a distant cousin of the lemurs. They post up on the trees near the ground and use their massive eyes to scan for insects below, dropping down on them with great speed. They don't have useful claws, instead having discs on the fingers and toes, much like a gecko or tree frog. Now I've seen a few tarsiers before, but never that close. Usually you see their eyes glaring back at you from the trunk of a small tree. And as soon as you make a sound, they'd launch at speeds that seem to defy physics, bouncing from tree to tree right off into the jungle, and you never see them again. But this one was surprisingly cooperative. I'll hope we find some more. Okay, there's something in the tree up here ahead. I've seen a bit of eye shine, and I'm going to go in to have a look. The lemurs were once widespread throughout Africa and Asia until other primates like monkeys were thought to have wiped them out. Some survived, and this next animal is one of them. Active by night to avoid competition is the most delightful creature, the slow loris. Yes, it does move slowly and it feeds on insects high in the trees. They have kind of a sad and cuddly look about them, but a bite from one of these turns rapidly septic if they are roughly handled. What a treat to see one though. While I was jumping over the rocks, I happened to look down in the water and under the water was this snake hunting. I don't know what it was hunting. In fact, I'm not even sure what species it is. It's got a very rough file-like texture. It doesn't appear venomous. I've had a, a decent look at it. It appears to be a species of keelback or freshwater snake. It's amazing, each little scale actually has a keel right in the middle of it. I'll send him back after a couple of photos and, well, continue and see what else is along here. Oh, there's nothing quite like getting back to the tent after a 
couple of hours walking through the jungle. Anyway, that was an interesting night. Got as close as I've ever been to a Tarsia. Got a good look at a slow loris. And uh, that snake that I still have to identify. But it's time for lights out and see what tomorrow brings. <laughs>